What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the events that are in MTG Arena 4 Constructed and whether or not they're going to be worth it for you as a player. As of Streets of New Capenna, events have kind of gotten a new update to kind of coincide with a new updated structure to go along with the new play in point system that they have for those weekend qualifiers that they do every other week almost in a given month for the new professional play structure they got going on in arena but with that being said whether or not the events are actually worth it for the cost of gems or gold that you have to then invest into and also the fact that you actually have to provide your own deck to dive into we're going to kind of be discussing all those kind of talking points when it comes to mtg arena with that out of the way let's just dive in and let's just start talking about it so here we are in a standard event and this is kind of like you know i'm just diving into this one but all the best of one events are very similar structured when it comes to overall rewards and also cost uh you know the cost of the event itself is 375 gems or 2500 gold you play at least nine matches give or take if you i don't think ever will get to 10 matches because if you've gotten to 10 matches you've probably already gotten your seven wins as you do play until you lose three matches uh but overall this is kind of like the new structure the way it used to be uh is a structure of you used to play in the same event here you used to instead only spend 95 gold or 95 gems or 500 gold and you did the same thing you played seven games but the most you'd win is about a thousand gold and then you i believe also we get two rare uh cards at, also on top of that and you know you got a breakdown of gold uh throughout the process of that and i think at like six six or six wins you got like one uh additional rare random rare and then the, when you got the seven it's when you got multiple but for the most part the break even point was kind of like the best the five wins got you little got you back pretty much as exactly what you spent into the event and then you know you were able to either do another event or maybe move on to something else with the new increase in prizes we now increase the overall cost into the event so the cost of you know playing in one of these events is a little bit more expensive so the stakes are a little bit higher uh the fact that there's play-in points at the end of this also makes it a little bit more competitive i would say as a whole as i felt like you know the events prior to this update was more of a laid-back casual thing as like i said the you really got random rares and some gold out of it nothing super crazy so unless you're trying to really farm the currency there really wasn't any sort of pressure to really try to get the maximum amount of wins just breaking even was always good and then going from there you know was always beneficial but with this new structure getting gems is definitely one of these things this is kind of more in line with the price structure when you look at a premier draft or uh or a quick draft you know you kind of get a breakdown of gems and at a certain point you start getting packs and at the end you kind of get the most rewards uh, so like i said you know if you only get a single if you get zero wins you still walk away with 25 gems which really doesn't get you too much uh in arena which is kind of weird why they started with this amount uh, i guess it's like a breakdown of you know 375 gems at the initial cost at two wins you double that so essentially it looks like we're in a doubling process of so 50 gems at one win at three two wins you get 75 gems and now we get our first pack at uh three wins you get 200 gems and one pack at four wins this is why we're getting kind of close to that break even point we get 300 gems and one pack five wins is where we go over the break even point where we get more gems than what it would cost to get into the event and then on top of that we get our second pack so that's definitely very good there at six wins if we get to this point you get 450 gems which is even more above the amount that it costs to play in the event and you still get two packs and then finally at the seven wins you get 500 gems which is almost double the amount of gems needed to play in the event to get three packs and then you get the one play in point and like i said uh, you can play play i can use the playing points to enter a qualifier playing event each month so definitely one of those things which is definitely kind of cool if you're looking to kind of expand you know playing a little bit more competitive magic structure i guess this is kind of one of those things i know i'm blocking the picture with where my camera is but i felt like this kind of at least gives you most of the screen uh for the most part without blocking everything uh but you know it's definitely one of those things right you have to kind of come into these events with a little bit a little bit of being prepared uh, i do think you have to come into one of these events if you're looking to try to get to those uh, like six five to five plus wins or possibly even get to seven wins with a highly competitive deck whether it's a top meta deck especially for best of one as i assume a lot of people who participate in these events uh play the more aggressive decks the decks that are trying to grind out you know can win games a good chunk of the time i bet you 10 to 1 if you probably play in this event today at the, as the time of the recording uh you know there'll probably be a ton of boros aggro as i do feel like it's a very high win rate deck especially on the play um and that's the kind of the one downside to playing best of one especially in kind of a 
a competitive way is the fact that really whatever you open with, whether you're on the play or the draw, really can affect the outcome of a match. Uh, if you get you know a terrible hand, you're gonna have to mulligan. If you're on the, if you're on the if you're on the draw, you go second. If you're against a very aggressive opponent and you may not have the right hand, all of a sudden now you're falling behind, and really the game's already lost before you even even it's begun. When it comes to uh, traditional, it's pretty similar to best of one. Uh, you do actually probably play more games overall, as this is you know best of three essentially, or traditional is best of three uh the difference here is that the, you can play the event until you play five matches regardless of your win record uh the 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 win the overall current like the overall like what you get in return for what you pay is a little bit better at zero wins we walk away with 50 gems in a pack at one win we now get 100 gems in a pack two wins this is where we get 150 gems in two packs uh three wins uh we get 600 gems which is almost the cost of entry in two packs four wins we break we go over the 750 gems and now we get two packs and five wins is where you get like the break even point and you actually walk away with a lot more play in points here so this is one of those things that's kind of hard to you know you got to kind of really build a sideboard around what is currently in the meta and best of three meta is always different than best of one meta but i do think this at least gives you a little bit more fair chance of possibly you know getting to the end Granted, you do have to go perfect and not drop a single match, but I do think this is definitely a better way to play this little bit more competitive style of magic. Um, though I would say the overall cost of this event is almost is double of what the best of one is, uh, as it is 750 gems and 5,000 gold, where I think it's 375 and 200, 2,500 gems. But it's definitely one of those things that you know you you do spend, and I feel like you get a little bit more back in return. Um, you know. But with the downside of you only get five matches, so regardless of record, uh, you know, it's going to be hard to go perfect as compared to the best of one where you can play nine games, lose two of them, still win seven. It's definitely, you know, one of those give, give or takes. And I guess it depends on what kind of player you are. Um, but like I said, you know, events are definitely kind of interesting here. Um, I do feel like they're forgotten about in arena. Uh, you know, there's definitely something here when it comes to playing like a style of magic that is this way instead of playing on the rank ladder or even in the play queue as there i feel like there's a little bit more stakes at, at the end and you do get rewarded for playing in them um if it's as good as it used to be for like farming gold and currency i don't really think so just because of you know the difference in stakes here i do feel like you know maybe the best of ones better overall if you're looking to farm gems but i i honestly feel like if you're looking to play like the traditional standard and try to farm gems that way sure Maybe you can go four and one in a few events, but it's going to definitely be hard to consistently be four and one, if not better. Um, whereas at least in the best of one, you can still, you know, get your five, five or six wins and still lose three matches. So I do feel like, you know, there's a, there's a better chance there and you kind of get a little bit more, you get a little bit extra, uh, you know, tries, even if the first couple games don't go very well. I mean, the grant, granted, the other thing too, is it could be completely different metas, even compared to even the play and uh, rank ladder, just because here, you know, I'm, I bet you 10 to 1 people are playing decks that are more, you know, built around playing more competitive magic than it is just trying to grind ranks or things like that in arena. Um, you know, it is something if you're looking to do something a little bit different than, you know, saving up for a draft or saving up for a weekly event or something like that. Um, you know, it's cool that they updated the price structure, but still at the end of the day, I'm unsure if this is something you should really dive into, especially if you're someone who's very concerned on how much gold or currency you have and trying to build multiple decks. If you're someone who's a little bit more limited on budget, as I don't think until you really have that really higher com competitive deck, you should really jump into something like this just because, uh, you know, if you, you know, don't do very well, you're going to lose out. Um, even if you don't like, especially in the best of one where you don't even get a pack until you get to two wins. Um, it's definitely def it's definitely one of those things that I feel like if I was going to be a gambling man, I'd probably still gamble on playing draft. I think draft is a better value um, just in the fact that you don't need to have a good deck to initially get into. Uh, you pick out a packs and kind of build your deck that way. Everyone else you're playing against is doing the same. Granted, you know, everyone drafts in different uh, pods, so you're not drafting against the same, you know, you're not drafting against people you're playing against. That's the one downside. So if th that person has a very good pod, their deck is definitely very better. Whereas this, it's kind of a crapshoot on what kind of deck you're going to be facing. Um, you know, 10 to 1, you're going to be facing a meta deck. And if you have a very weak deck or a deck that's not really fully fledged out as its meta version, it's definitely something that's going to put you behind. So in my personal recommendation, I would say if you're going to spend the gold or gems and decide to play some sort of event, I would dive into a limit event instead. And as you kind of build up your collection, maybe you feel like you feel really good about a particular deck, like you played on the rank queue, you've done pretty well overall in best of one or best of three, depending on how you like to rank. 
uh, maybe then that's when you can dive into one of these events and kind of really see how your deck does against other decks as this also doesn't really you know you're not playing against players at the same rank as you in rank Q, and this you're really just playing against players at the same uh overall uh win rate as you so if you lose a game you're going to play against someone who's zero and one whereas in rank you'll just play against someone who's roughly around the same rank as you so it's definitely a little bit different definitely change the pace but guys let me know what you down below do you guys participate in ranks anything like that uh, i would definitely love to hear this this is something maybe i'll dive into in my free-to-play series i'm not really sure if this is something i would really be able to dive into immediately this is something that maybe as i build my deck out and kind of finish it this is something i can try to see how the deck does in a more competitive way than just playing in the rank queue but that being said like the video if you like the video hit uh if you want to know i post new videos on the channel hit that subscribe button and until next time I'll see you in the next video. Just want to give a special shout out to the channel members here on my YouTube channel. You can also become a channel member yourself down below the video, hitting that join button. It definitely helps out a lot. And I just appreciate you guys for your support.